They say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Richard Trithui and Sons prove that old saying to be true. He is a longtime heating and plumbing expert for this old house and his sons, Evan and Ross, are following in his footsteps. Together, they're going to show us the unique home heating system they have installed in this massive renovation project. It's home heating using water, also known as hydronic. When this house was originally built, they didn't think much about the cost of heating it. But nowadays, people are really worried about how to heat the houses and be comfortable in a cold weather. Right. Most of America uses furnaces and hot air. In a cold climate, I really want to explain to people the advantage of using water as the way that we're going to heat the building, hydronic heating. And we can use that water to do everything we need to make the air warm, to make our feet warm, and be comfortable. This is a beautiful space. Absolutely. A lot of room to heat, though. Yep. So normally in a room like this, you're going to have a heating duct over there, maybe one over there. And then one over there, one over there. Exactly. They're everywhere. Blasting heat through That's the space, right. really heating your furniture and the corners of the room. Lightly toasting you. Right. And right. then the heat is rising up to the top of the room where you don't need it. Right, where you don't want it. Plus, that machine is going on, your furnace is working overtime, heating the space, and then it goes off and it cools down like that. And you feel cold right after the thing shuts off. Right. With a hydronic heating system, Richard has installed radiant heat right into the floor. Warm water circulates through these tubes, heating the floor. Just imagine this entire floor is the radiator, and it's going to heat the air that's touching it, and it's going to start rising like this, and it gets up to this point, it might be 68 right here, right. and as it goes above me, it gets cooler, so I have less heat at the top of the building. And you're really talking about heating the person and the body and not wasting any of that that's energy right. to, eat, to right. heat all of the space There really you. is no better way to heat the human body than radiant heat. A hydronic system is like a tree. Its roots are the basic boiler or heat source. The trunk gets the water through the building. And the leaves are the heat emitters. Radiant is just one of these heat emitters. Okay. We got a bunch of choices. You know, this house originally had these cast iron convectors. Mm -hmm. Okay, and those things are sit underneath this cabinet. Nice and There's warm. a front cover. It would draw air in from the bottom. Mm -hmm. It would heat it up and come out through the top. We're going to take these existing convectors and we're going to add this. This is a thermostatic radiator valve that will sense the temperature at every single radiator. So you're saying that the original way that this house was heated was the most efficient way that you could actually do it. Absolutely. But what you're doing is customizing it so that it, it can actually be a controlled environment. Zoned every single radiator, every single room. The entire system has a central brain that puts just the right water temperature into the building proportional to the temperature outside. You know, it's funny, most heating systems in America are actually controlled by having a gas pedal at full blast uh -huh. and then a break. Right. The thermostat comes on and heats up the whole house, furnace overheats it and it shuts off. We just want to just keep up with the heat loss as it happens. So as you walk into a room, it's always just the right temperature. Okay, so you're talking about a tree. So I'm looking at the emitters here. That's right. The radiators are radiant heat, the leaves. Yep. Yep. But then you've obviously got the trunk of the tree and you've got the roots of the tree. That's right. All right, so I want to take a look at those. Well, systems. for that, you're going to talk to one of my boys. Okay. I heard I'm looking for a trunk. You found it. Is this the place? This is it. This That's is it. That's it? This is the radiant manifold. H how is that possible when I think about a heater in a home, the trunks are huge. There's ductwork everywhere. Exactly. The difference here is that we're using water, not air. Right. Water's a great conductor of heat. It seems crazy, but an 8 by 14 inch air duct transmits the same amount of heat as a 3 quarter inch water pipe. How is that? Well, the difference is that we're using water, not air. Now think about it. If you had a stove with boiling water on it, all right, and you had that at 212 degrees, mm -hmm. and you had an oven, or you're baking cookies at 212 degrees. Right. Which one would you stick your hand in? Well, I always stick my hand in the oven because I have to check the cookies, but I would not check my pasta. Exactly. So the difference is that we're using water, not air. Talk me through how this system works. It's very simple. You have hot water that comes down the supply pipe here, and it goes out to different radiators or different zones throughout the house. It goes out and comes back on the return leg and goes back to the boiler to get reheated. It's like an on-demand water system. Exactly, exactly. If the zone needs it, it will kick on the pump and it will send hot water up and it drink, have it come right back down. But I want to know where all this hot water comes from. I'm liking the look of the trunk, but I'm assuming there's got to be roots. Where are the roots? The roots are in the boiler room. Okay, I'm assuming there's another brother in there as well. You got it. All right. Aha, uh -huh. you must be the roots. I am the roots. And this is the actual roots of the system right here. That's it. This is it. That Th little thing right there. This little thing. This is the magic box. This is the boiler, which is going to give us enough heat to heat the entire house. So this one boiler heats the water in what's called the closed loop system. 
The man from the emitters, the leaves on the tree, pulls water through the closed loop. Hot water for the kitchen and bath is just another emitter zone. It's really just circulating and cycling that same exactly. water. Exactly, and the key is that we only have one flame right here. The hydronic heating system only works as hard as it has to. This boiler here has a sensor outside where it knows the outdoor temp and it knows exactly how hard it actually has to work based on outdoor temperature. But there's got to be a control system to manage all of that, right? Exactly. I think Dad's working on that upstairs. Okay, your dad is in charge of the controls. That does yeah. not surprise me. I'm going to go find him. <laughs> hey, Richard. Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Yeah, I'm in control. <laughs> so your sons were telling me you had some serious control issues. I do. Do you <laughs> want to talk about no, this? No. <laughs> no. The challenge for every heating and cooling professional is to figure out what size equipment to put in. Mm -hmm. You know, we know about the coldest day of the year, but it rarely happens. So we have to find a way to be able to have the system be efficient for the long periods of the spring and the fall mm -hmm. when it's not the coldest day. Hydronic Heating's weather response control is the most affordable and cost-effective energy saver you can put into your home heating system. You know, in Europe it's about 99% hot water heating. In the U.S. it's about 93% forced hot air heating. And about 70% of the U.S. people complain about being uncomfortable. Hmm. Using water as a medium is a way that we can give the best of both worlds, efficiency and comfort. So it sounds like we're going a lot of hot air. <laughs> I take exception to that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Amy, more so now than any other time in my business career, people are willing to listen to the story about better heating. And stop blowing all that hot air. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> See you guys. See ya.